Hello SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded, but for today I'm SGD, the School of Granite Drilling. Uh, a comment that I see in other related, you know, ancient lost high technology, but also that I've, I've had uh, sometimes honestly, sometimes very dishonestly, bubba. But okay, so they have to relent that you can do this with a copper tube, but then the question is, okay though, how did the ancient Egyptians make copper tubes to drill with? I think this is very uh, anyway but whether it's a bow drill or a flywheel drill how did they create these tubes so just in the last video i posted it would be interesting to see a version where people create the copper tube from the ground up i'm assuming that's a auto correct from a phone using the tools that were available in times of, of the egyptians and not some perfectly modern uh, quality milled ones and that's a good point so i'll all these links will be in the description, of course. So the Anthropogenes channel, it's the Russian language channel of the Scientist versus Myth. They have many more videos on this channel than what they do on the Scientist versus Myth against Myth channel. That's the English version. But uh, even though it's in Russian, you can follow the imagery quite along. This channel used to be the Alexander Sokolov channel until recently. And drilling granite with a large copper pipe. Now that's an auto translate. Uh, that the title is in Russian, but you should pull it up. But again, links in the description. A very simple way to make a copper tube is to get a copper sheet and with copper nails and just wrap it around the wooden shaft and bring it in there. I'll link, I'll show that video. At the end of this same video, they also just create a simple cast, pour some copper in, and then they make a full copper tube. So that's another method to make copper tubes. This is from the video Drilling Granite with a Large Copper Pipe by the Anthropogenes channel, formerly Alexander Sokolov channel. Uh, they made some copper nails, copper sheet, wrap it around the, the drill shaft and what we have is a copper tube. Very simple way to do it from uh, a copper sheet. I've used this uh, clip in another video before but it's also explained like they say okay you can make a little drill hole but how do you make giant drill holes? And is a very simple um, explanation for that. So how to make a copper tube or copper pipe, it's very simple. You use a copper sheet. There they have the uh, large drill hole. And we'll have another clip in a moment because even that, even though that uh, tube is rather shallow, you can make tube holes as deep as you want. There's a very simple method for that. From that same video here, they just made a cast, probably out of plaster, and poured, poured some copper in, and you're left with a copper tube. Just break away the material in there, and there you have your very simple, very to very, very simple copper tube. So, basic two methods either you just wrap a copper shaft, I mean, a copper sheet around the shaft, or you can cast a copper tube very easily. Now they weren't even using the lost wax method where you could make a thinner tube um, to that as well. All depends on your skill in making the mould and casting it. Also this is from their website and they have a very excellent paper principles of tubular free abrasive drilling which goes into more detail than what they do in the videos. There they've cast a copper tube placed it on the wooden shaft, just used some twine to wedge it in there firmly and there's an example of their drill. Now tapered as well, they're always tapered but, uh, but I'll link this as well. But then, well how did they drill deep core holes with short tubes such as this? Well it's very easy process to do and all you need to drill is to the bottom maximum drill to the bo to until the wooden shafts gets in your way and then just with copper or with wood you know whether copper shims and then a little copper wedge or just with wooden wedges in the cases uh, examples that I've done I use copper shims and then just wooden wedges and I pop out that core so you drill down as deep as you can with your tube and when you when you can drill no more you just pop the core out and then you keep going down now if you go back you can keep going as long as your wooden shaft is because the shaft is thinner than what the tube is so you can just keep going down very short tube can drill very deep 
and copper tools, wooden tools can pop out this granite core very easily. This is a sort of two for one explanation because you see how with a shallow, very short tube, how you can create a very deep hole, but also with this, with only with copper and wooden wedges, I'm going to remove this granite core. So it's often said steel, steel, you know, you can't do it without steel. Well, that's just bunk. Uh, you can do it very easily. And so whether you're drilling with that copper sheet at shallow, or you cast just a, a shallow, a, a short, tight and copper tube, the shaft will only be, in, the tube will, will, the pipe will only be so long. But so you drill down to that depth and then you just pop out the core and then you keep drilling down. So with very short drill tube, you can drill as, lo as long as you want, as long as what the, the wooden shaft is that it's attached to. And you only need copper and timber to pop out these granite cores. It's very easy. My, on the stone hammer I'm holding, you notice that it's just on my fingertips as well. So it's not like you need to apply massive force to break this out. This is an important feature. The only damage done is to the wooden wedges where you hammer it at the top and it uh, flanges out. So again, this will be a very important feature. And again, these things are, you know, along with Dennis Stocks or the Scientist Against Smith, uh, I'm willing to film this and, and post it. And you don't need to rely on my testimony. You can test these things for yourself. And this is a very big problem for the lost ancient high technology community who relies on the testimony of, Qu of Christopher Dunn and a few very low res pictures but uh, actual experimentation shows what he describes as impossible is actually very very achievable uh, very curious uh, so for some reason and there's a whole thing okay Christopher Dunn apparently this is what happened to his copper t uh, tool. He couldn't use this tool, did not pop out his copper core. It deformed hugely at the bottom and only bent so much. Again, I find this remark, I don't, I, I'm just saying it out. Uh, this is just, unless he annealed his tool on purpose to get that, there is no way that he could get that result. Just no way um, you can experiment with this for yourself. It is just bogus. Maybe Australian copper, again, these, that's only 1.2 millimetres thickness, no deformation in the copper. Uh, even the timber that I used, the only damage to the timber was from pounding it down with a stone hammer at the top. And maybe a little bit of polish added to the wooden wedges, but no, no problem whatsoever. No fear of contradiction if you want to repeat this experiment. I'll put I'll link these in the description as well because the lost ancient high technology industry is just selling pure bunkum, absolute nonsense, just falsehoods in regards to granite cores, fully exposed within this series, whether it's the tapering of the cores, the deep grooves, the polishing, so the deep grooves but the outside being polished, the alleged spiral uh, that is there when it's just simply not a continuous it is just, you know, their own images prove that as well, which is remarkable as well. Uh, why these deep, deep grooves appear and also how the properties of copper, how to work hard in copper and how, how the hell did Christopher Dunn fail to get that out. Uh, especially the tapering of the core. All I can say, like I say this without fear of contradiction, he faked his experiment. There is no way that he did not achieve a taper by using a top heavy drill. I go, I go into depth um, into this as well. I'm gonna do a summary of this, but I'm just, it, it is, it, the experiment was faked. It was not done with a hand tool. It was done with a machine. I go into detail the, using their own words and their own images. I don't, you know, I'm not straw manning them at all, but I'm just saying it's pure fakery. And the other features such as the inability to, why wasn't Christopher Dunn's experiment why did it have a sanded finish and not a polished finish? Uh, just remarkable incompetence, but I think he knows full well what's going on. Anyway, these will be linked in there. Uh, it, this is not an, a, a, like a bad analysis of the results or badly conducted experiments. I'm saying it is faked and in, uh, in designed to fail to sell this pure bunkum. 
you can repeat the experiments for yourself they're cheap they're easy and rather quick to do as well you can test all of these things uh, multiple independent experiments all get the same results the only person who did not get these results are Christopher Dunn and well that's just you know if multiple independent experiments always get the same results and someone gets another result either they conducted the experiment terribly which in this case you can't really do because it's just the copper tube and rotating it in granite or they fake the results and it's just fake <laughs> it is it's a fraud it's a lie uh, I you know just please repeat these experiments and if anyone's got wants to defend Christopher Dunn just repeat his experiment uh, that he and and get a lack of taper that's all you got to do to to back up this guy but they won't because they know the, the results the laws of physics and biology just says you have to get a taper he faked his experiment he did not do it by hand he did it with a machine just pure bunk anyway but there are plenty of examples you know the Egyptians where's the copper tubes well there's lots and lots of tubing this is a reconstruction of uh, Queen Hetep Hire's uh, tomb but there we see the actual pieces of it and including the canopy around it itself so the furniture has some rather intricate casting but there are also plenty of tubes and the tubes are just simply done by getting a copper sheet wrapping it around welding it together this would be the better way to do it because you can very easily you can very easily cast a copper tube but a sheet of copper can then be work hardened so you just roll it or you or you just beat it with a with a hammer stone hammer and that work hardens the copper it turns it into a much harder material the, the, the material is exactly the same but it becomes much harder so there's annealed soft copper just by working it you work hard on it and it t turns into something much much harder so that's just one example and uh, I'll again link this paper in there uh, mortuary temple pyramid of Suhura at Abu Si the offering at the mortuary temple offering basin which was plumbed with copper piping the oldest known example of plumbing there was around of with metal pipes there was around 180 meters of copper piping at the temple so copper tubes copper pipes just a lot of a lot of lot and lot of it all around Egypt uh, the tomb of Rekmire in Thebes uh, is a wonderful temple because it shows all of these different whether it's stone working woodworking metal working it doesn't just it shows like the craftsmen at work but also the workshop so heating up preparing the cauldron and then pouring the metal the amount of information left by the Egyptians in regards to this is much much higher than you would infinitely much higher than you would ever hear from the lost ancient high technology community uh, Old Kingdom first uh, second dynasty to uh, reign of Kastap Kemway a child's bracelet uh, a, whether it's a bracelet or a ring it's just a tube or or a pipe it's just a short one so just be you know like just extend that you make it longer uh, rings would be the same how did they uh, sometimes they would just beat it so you get a sheet of copper you wrap it around and you just beat it and, and make your shape but uh, when it comes to casting the lost wax method is being used all across the ancient world South America Mesopotamia uh, Eastern Asia and Egypt as well so what you do is you get a wax mold you wrap it either in plaster or just uh, sand leave a little port a little hole at the bottom for the wax to run out you pour in your molten copper it fills up the gap and you can turn little wax shapes into something like that it's still uh, a method uh, done today Along with these search terms, primitive technology copper casting, locks, lost wax copper casting, I'll put a bunch of links in the description to j just some of them. There are so many, it's like hard to know where to pick from. And there are slight variations in the method, but it's essentially the same. You make a mold around wax, either you pour the molten copper in, leaving a, a port or a, or a tube, a gap for the wax to run out, or you simply make the mold uh, bake the mold pour out the wax and then bake the mold properly and then pour the copper bronze iron whatever your metal is and that's one method of uh, one of the methods of lost wax casting uh, cylindrical 
pendants, very complex jewellery. It's, it's a tube, it's a cylinder. This goes to the middle to uh, early New Kingdom. Uh, again, Old Kingdom have the same, you know, I'm just pulled up. So, copper, gold, silver tubes used in jewellery. Golden beads being cast with a little hole left in them to put the thing through there. You shouldn't um, analyse these copper beads, uh, gold beads too much. Tish boom. Copper, uh, golden sandals with these cast toes. It's a closed tube. Even a bit more uh, added level of difficulty in putting the toenails in there. Uh, tubing is a very easy zebu shaped weight from uh, Beth Shemesh. A lot of these figurines, Egyptian, Mesopotamian, elsewhere, are not solid in the middle. You can see the illustration of it's hollow on the inside. This is to save very expensive material. So making something like this compared to a copper tube infinitely uh, easier. The uh, Nahal Mishnah Hoard, as it's called. I'll put this link. Lost history of long history of lost wax casting. This goes to around 3,200 BC. Even older examples, very very complex shapes, and it's so it's, it's a tube, it's a scepter, uh, the tubular, and with these other features attached. Again, just makes a copper tube look very simple. I'll link these videos in the description recently post because I talk about Egyptian copper, but it's actually our cynical copper. This Nahal Mishnah hoard is. Uh, he calls it arsenical copper. It should actually be defined as arsenical bronze because the amount of arsenic in here is so high that there, it's impossible that it was just an accidental impurity from the ore itself. The Egyptian examples, but also this Nahal uh, Mishnah hoard, shows very advanced metallurgy in you know the primitive people's days. Arsenic, arsenical copper slash bronze is much harder than 99% pure modern copper. The pure modern copper that I'm using is actually a disadvantage in terms of tool, whether it's um, hammers, saws, or drills. Uh, modern copper is actually a disadvantage. That's, sorry, Nahal Mishnah Hoard. Here's some other examples from that hoard. Uh, tubes, tubes, tubes everywhere, even these like horn pipe ones. Again, these make a simple copper tube look simple. I'll link this paper as well. Here we see an example of Dennis Stocks and casting. Because the important feature about arsenical copper is that firstly it's a better sheen to it but it is better the properties of behavior of it is better at casting. So for instance we see two failed copular, um, copper tubular castings and then a successful one and there we see from the top but they're from the side as well and I'll link this paper as well so there's an art uh, it takes skill to cast properly so we see some failed castings but the Nahal Mishnah hoard and just the, whether it's gold silver copper all across the ancient world you know they were very skilled at what they did and, and tubes um, pretty simple if you want more information you know, just Google search or YouTube search videos, primitive technology copper casting or the lost wax copper casting method. Uh, very, very intricate shapes, making uh, tubes look rather simple. So the Egyptians had copper tubes. They could easily make copper tubes to drill with. And uh, yeah, so it can be done. The archaeological evidence of these type of drills is just definite and yeah so that's it not much more to say but uh, they did much better than 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 simple tubes I always have to say